diving deep into these stories and into these anecdotes is our next fireside chat. Thanks, thanks. Can you hear me now? Yeah. So good afternoon, everybody. I hope you all had a very good meal, you know, and still awake. <laughs> so, you know, I have Pasna here with me. But before I really kind of begin talking to Pasna, before I begin talking to Pasna and give a brief introduction of her, I have been telling her, she doesn't remember, of course, you know, but uh, many years ago, you know, I used to work for another network, many, many years ago, and, you know, she had called us for a brief, uh, you know, our team of people, and, uh, and you know, ma many, you know, you meet many clients, you have many meetings, you know, over the period of years that you kind of have worked, but some meetings kind of remain with you, you know, and that particular one meeting remained with me, even to, <laughs> even to date, and I remember very clearly the kind of time that she spent with us briefing us, you know, on what she really was expecting us to kind of, you know, contribute or collaborate with her. It was such clarity of thought, so much passion, and that kind of remained with me. And Nupasna, I'm so happy today that I have the opportunity of sitting next to you and talking to you today. So that's the fireside chat that we have here. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much, Mona. So here we have Upasna. I'll just give a very brief introduction of her. I think a lot of many people would know her here. So um, Upasna, you know, uh, holds a master's degree in management. Um, uh, science and engineering from Stanford, a prestigious Stanford University, you know, and um, uh, she is a co-founder of MobiQuick, a household brand synonymous with payments and BNPL. So many people who do not know what BNPL really means is buy now and pay later segment in India. She did a stint at HSBC in San Diego and was exceptional at her work. She was really, I mean, we would know that, that she will, wherever she will be, she'll do very, very well, you know, and the hard working and passion that she has. She also worked at PayPal, where she picked up the knowledge about payment systems in Americas, Europe, and Asia, and gained knowledge about risk detection and fraud management. And this is the field that she'll probably take on when she came to India. So she left a very comfortable life, a good corporate job, and came back to India, and became the part of Indian startup co ecosystem in this country. And uh, now we all know that MobiQuick is recognized as one of India's leading tech founders. So that's Upasna for us here. And um, Upasna, we know that you know you have uh, you know built a very very strong proposition and a strong brand, you know. And in the audiences here, we have actually a uh, CEOs. We've got co-founders. We have got you know uh, CMOs of you know the Indian built brands, you know. And uh, you know, and I'm sure they all have their unique journey, you know, experiences, you know, of building the brands in the country. Uh, we would definitely would like to know your journey and your experience of really building MobiQuick where it is right now. So it's over to you. <clears throat> so I think uh, doing something uh, new is always challenging because uh, by definition, if you were doing something which everybody else is doing, you know, which is the popular flavor, then uh, it wouldn't be a startup, it wouldn't be, you wouldn't be the only one doing it. So of course, when we were getting started, I remember, I mean, forget about, uh, you know, people that we were trying to hire or potential investors, you know, my own family members were laughing at me. Ki India ke se cashless hone wala hai. Matlab, ye to cash economy hai. I'm talking about 10, 12 years ago. So I said, ki, hai, hume lag raha hai, uh, ki it's going to change. There is going to be a digital revolution. And you know, I would like to give a few years of my life to that mission. And uh, do saal mein clear ho jayega ki India is direction mein ja hai ya nahi, and whether MobiQuick will play a big part in that or not. Zada se zada kya hoga? Agar do saal mein fail ho gaye, then again I'll get a job with a you know good um, uh, payments or a financial services company, and uh, you know this is the time to experiment. So that's sort of how we got started, uh, you know, with a lot of naysayers uh, saying no, but uh, the internal conviction was there. I had seen how uh, technology simplifies payments and brings so much simplicity to daily life of consumers and also of businesses, whether you are a retailer or an e-commerce uh, company. And it was only bound to happen in time in India because our country is also developing so fast. And of course, we had the premonition. I also benefited from the fact that my co-founder, uh, you know, he used to design chips for all these MNCs for smartphones. So he had this view that China made the smartphone revolution. Aya hai. Uh, I'm talking about early 2000s. So India may up 2010 wale decade mein aayega. So that was our insight that India is operating on 99% cash. So 100% digital nahi hoga, but 99% cash se 80% cash, 70% cash ki direction mein this country will go. The other thing was that 
you know, people will stop standing in lines to pay bills. People will want convenience. Smartphones will make, uh, you know, their entry in the market. And that's where, you know, uh, fintech can be born. So that's sort of how, you know, we got started. Uh, early beginnings were, you know, very humble. From my dining table, we started. That's what, you know, I was kind of wondering because, you know, just to have a thought of actually building this digital gap, I think was hugely challenging because I can tell you personally myself, you know, I'll be, I mean, after very long years of actually, you know, this particular proposition available to us, I started kind of using, you know, the, you know, the wallet system of, you know, doing transaction myself. So Indians are very, very, uh, you know, the, afraid of kind of getting it from a cashless. So also it was very, very challenging category to be in. I mean, you really took on the challenge. So any kind of experiences that you probably would have, you know, in this journey of, you know, really making the brand the way it is. So I think that, uh, see, in the first four years of MobiQuick's existence, we bootstrapped the company, which means that it was mine and my co-founder's personal savings. And we don't come from uh, well-to-do families. The co-founder happens to be a husband, by the way. The yeah. co-founder now happens <laughs> to be my husband. <laughs> Tab yeah. the. So, you know, we both came from modest families. We had limited savings from the five, six years that we had both worked. Uh, and uske corpus se we started the company. So there was no money for marketing uh, in the first few years. The idea was really, can we make something, the product so innovative that based on the product itself, we'll catch yeah. and acquire users. And why hua? I mean, much before Flipkart and others, our mobile app for payments was on the Google Play Store. And we just got millions and millions of users. I mean, I, I still remember we went from, maybe we had three lakh users or something in the first one, one and a half year. And we went from three lakh users to like a million users within a span of few months because our app was getting so many downloads from the Play Store. And the idea is once the user has downloaded, the self onboarding and usage experience of the user has to be so smooth that then they stick with you. So for us, the simplicity of the product, the simplicity of a payments app that we had built and Jovi wo karne aaye the, whether wo apna phone ka bill pay karne aaye the ya TV ka bill pay karne aaye the, that experience had to be wow, delightful. So that wahi se user ka trust build hoga. Because even at that time, you know, we were competing with Airtel Money. Airtel Money also had a payments platform at that time. And matlab koi kyu ek unknown brand mein apne paise dalega. But that's how it began. People started doing 100 rupee, 300 rupee transactions. And they found, arre, ye to mera kaam aise... Aram se ho gaya. That's when people started depositing money in the MobiQuick wallet. And I think by the time we were three years old, we had some three million users. We had some, tab to dollar ka rate bhi alag hota tha, but 10-15 crore user money humare company ke escrow account mein tha. And I myself was like, you know, pleasantly surprised. But that was sort of the big validation point for us. Uske baad humne RBI mein license ke liye apply kiya and then tab se we are just running. Kabhi ruke nahi. I know when I was asking, paas on paas nahi ka ki mein marketing budget to mein nahi mein pa itna hai nahi, na mein nahi kharcha ki hai. But you know, I was very product centric and that's what really the winning game for us was, you know. And Sishisa to phir mujhse ki question mein puchna ki marketing mein kitna kara, mein nahi jada paisa nahi kharchi hai. So acha, paas nahi, so do you think MobiQuick is in the forefront of fintech revolution in India? Of course. Well, uh, I heard you saying fintech many a times, you know. I mean, you refrain from kind of, you know, talking about the brand. We talk about the category a lot, you know. Yeah, so see, the thing is, uh, see, fintech India is a very large opportunity. I'm very happy to tell you that fintech India as a market has become now the third largest market in the world. Uh, so there's a lot of investor dollars also that have poured into this sector in the last few years. There are many large scale companies, many, there are about eight, 9,000 fintech startups in India. Okay, wow. um, so this is a sector in which, you know, we are definitely taking leadership as a country in 2022, India is the country which has processed the largest number of digital transactions as opposed to any other country in the world. So from a country that was 99% cash, we have come a long wow. way. However, the opportunity is still very large because abhi bhi sif approximately 300 million users digitally transact karte hai. Number of people who have access to credit in India is still 60-70 million. Number of people who are insured and invest, that number is still 25 million. So as you see, in a country of a billion, there is still like all these numbers are sub 10%. So now there is a lot of opportunity, a lot of businesses. 
you know, banenge. And of course, starting as a payments company, um, you know, from bill payments to payments on e-commerce platforms to payments in physical stores. Uh, and then four, five years ago, we started our foray into digital credit. So now MobiQuick gives uh, shopping loans, buy now, pay later loans uh, in partnership with banks and NBFCs. And then in the last few years, we've also enabled uh, small ticket insurance products as well as very interesting investment products where you can earn as high as 12% as opposed to what you would get from a bank FD or a bank savings rate. So that's why we call ourselves a fintech because while payments and credit are now two large pillars in our business, baki sare financial services may be hume interest hai, but it will obviously take us time to become scale, at scale in all of those. Yeah. So if you think about it, the play is really to bring people for daily life payments on our platform, on our app, and then give them all the financial services that their own banks are not really giving them. And the same thing we are also trying to do for small business. Because we are a two-sided network. So we have users, but we also have merchants who accept payments via MobiQuick. So for them also, we are trying to power all of these financial products. Wow. So tell me one, you know, uh, a very popularly asked question is, you know, and probably the question comes to my mind also is that, so while, you know, kind of, you know, doing this kind of, you know, transaction or payment or e-wallet is very, very convenient, you know, but is it really safe, you know, I mean, uh, what would be, what do you tell the customer? How do you really trust this particular way of transaction, you know, what would you really tell them, you know, so that they kind of believe that there's, there's a safety, there's security, and it's much, not only convenient, but also a very safe way of, you know, doing transaction for themselves. No, absolutely. And I think I'm very happy to tell you that, uh, see, in India, we have now two types of platforms. We have wallet-based platforms. We have UPI-based platforms. In popular apps like MobiQuick and our competitors, you will find both facilities available in the same app. Like in the MobiQuick app, you can pay using your wallet balance, you can pay using your credit balance, and you can also pay using your own bank balance using UPI. Uh, the reason I would say that, uh, you know, you can trust platforms of scale because all of us are regulated by the Reserve Bank of India. So we have two licenses from RBI, we have one license from SEBI, and we have one license from IRDAI, which is the insurance regulator. And not only us, all of our peers are also operating in a similar manner. So we are not as uh, you know, heavily regulated as banks are, but we are all also having to do monthly, quarterly reporting to the Reserve Bank and uh, annual in-person audits happen. So the bar on compliance and corporate governance for us is extremely high. In fact, we also have to report uh, in our monthly reporting that of the people who uh, put in a complaint, let's say for a refund or for some, uh, you know, transaction that didn't go through, apne kitne percentage of users ki complaint 24 hours mein resolve ki, kitno ki 48 hours mein ki, aur kitno mein usse zada. So that is the level of detail in which, you know, one uh, uh, platforms have to be compliant. Yeah, absolutely. I think service, customer servicing becomes a very, very critical signal part of the entire proposition. Tell me something geographically, you know, how are you, are you penetrating deeper into the smaller markets, you know? Um, are they growing for you, you know? I mean, that probably would be also, uh, you know, an insight for a lot of uh, people sitting here who are kind of building Indian brands. So I think that the next phase of, uh, you know, growth in India uh, in terms of the internet revolution, whether it is for e-commerce companies or for payment companies or fintech companies like ours, is definitely coming from the smaller cities and towns of the country and even villages, if I should say so. So if uh, we look at our user acquisition funnels and if we look at our, uh, you know, transacting users data, what we have found in the last two, three years, almost 65% of the new users that are downloading our app and are actively transacting, they're all not coming from metros. They are coming from smaller cities and smaller towns of the countries. And it, it would be so commonsensically also, right? Like if you live in a large city uh, like Delhi NCR, you have malls everywhere. So if you have to buy anything, you will get to ambience mall mein jaoge, aapko mil immediately. But if you're in a smaller store, a smaller city, you're bound to order online because you may not get that product or that brand that you're looking for. Uh, and if you are ordering online, then you will obviously need digital payments, digital credit, etc. So a lot of growth is coming from smaller markets. Uh, you know, the Gen Z people in their uh, mid twenties, uh, you know, as soon as uh, they are getting into their first jobs or their first uh, self-employment uh, businesses, they are 
using smartphone and internet to the hilt and uh, you know the the spending patterns that we're seeing from these smaller cities are just amazing like i'm i'm quite amazed like few years ago our focus was also on the first top 20 cities then top 100 cities now not just payments even our credit and financial services users you know we have reached 99 percent pin codes of india india has some 19253 pin codes and we have reached 99% of those PIN codes. So, I think that bank branch is not going to be but uh, digitally, we can reach every place. In fact, you have a quote that I was mentioning earlier, which I have read, which I found very interesting. It can be controversial, a question. So, Bobby Vick is making a meaningful difference, such as reaching out to gas stations in a faraway Jharkhand, and among other, many such untapped regions in the country. While the competition is occupied with hanging stickers near the media outlets. You have to disapprove it. So what do you believe should be their marketing strategy? Well, what do you believe they probably are not doing right? You know, and um, what, would, what advice you probably want to kind of give them? See, Deke, there are all kinds of uh, um, companies and there are all kinds of advantages that companies have. I think some companies and uh, you know, yahan pe, uh, to jo audience hai uske se, you guys would love it. But some companies are more focused on PR and uh, you know, brand. To make sure mm. ki, to make sure, ye jaan ke to nahi tha. I'm just abhi joking. Abhi time hai. <laughs> I'm just joking. To make sure that, you know, jaa investors hai, jaa influencers hai, waha pe apka coverage strong hai. But see, we decided many years ago that we are in this for the long haul. You know, like, aap banking sector mein socho ge, to koi ye thodi socha ga ki Uday Kotak means Kotak Mahindra Bank, ye thodi socha ga ki 5 saal ke liye bina rahe hai, 10 saal ke liye bina rahe hai. Ab wo ek institution hai, wo banta hi rahe ga. अब उदय जी उसमें जितने साल रहेंगे रहेंगे बट कोटक महिंद्रा बैंक तो आगे बढ़ता ही जाएगा सो आई थिंक हमारा थॉट प्रोसेस यही है कि बिजनेस बनाना है तो फंडामेंटल्स पे बनाना है ऑफ कोर्स वी स्पेंड मनी ऑन मार्केटिंग ऑफ कोर्स वी स्पेंड मनी ऑन यूजर एक्विजिशन बट एवरीथिंग हैज टू बी इन बैलेंस लाइक इट हैज टू बी अ पी एन एल दैट इज गेटिंग क्रिएटेड बिकॉज लॉन्ग टर्म इफ आई वॉन्ट टू है सस्टेनेबल प्ले लाइक यू सेड राइट हाउ शुड कंज्यूमर्स ट्रस्ट ब्रांड्स Consumers also want to see longevity in companies, Absolutely. right? Yep. Abhi last year ke funding winter mein itni companies ki, uh, so to speak, hawa nikal rahi hai. If you want to build a sustainable business, you have to think about profits. If you have to think about profits, then you have to run on a budget. And I think that's where uh, taking a product innovation role, taking the uh, thought process of how can you bring so differentiated products that the user is bound to stick with your platform and not go to your competing platform. I think this is sort of how we are trying to build our business. So I have two questions, you know, I mean, I, I can see the buzzer kind of, you know, moving up towards zero. Two questions really is, you know, on the subject of building, you know, brands for Bharat. You know, I think that will be probably concerning and relevant to a lot of people who are sitting in the audiences here. So I'll ask the direct questions. Do you believe the Indian brands are capable and equipped to give a strong competition to the international brands who are coming into our country? Absolutely, ma'am, absolutely. Ab I can talk more about tech because I've been in the tech business right from the beginning, being an engineering uh, graduate myself. So, firstly, you big tech. Dekh ab wo Google, ho, Apple, ho, you know, Infosys. Whatever you want, engineering talent in India is superb. And all the big tech companies, you know, are relying very heavily on uh, non-resident Indians, you know, to build uh, their new products. So there is no reason why we can't make in India for India and then make it for international markets as well. I think that uh, this coming decade, you will see that product companies built out of India, uh, both consumer facing and B2B companies will not only create, uh, you know, proper legitimate businesses in India, but especially in my sector in FinTech, our technology stacks are so uh, new and cutting edge that you will see many of our stacks now get replicated in international markets. We may think that US is very developed, we may think UAE is very developed. Sure, unke airports are good, unke infra in terms of roads are good, but financial technology infra mein, India is right now at the top of the league tables and you know we'll definitely see a lot of product companies going uh, to international market. That's really good, you know, it's really encouraging, that's really good to know and I'm sure a lot of people will be probably encouraged by that comment of yours. Second thing is, I think it's buzzers moving to zero and I have to ask you this question, you are a, you know, a power woman, 
you know, you've kind of, you know, really set standards, you're inspirational. You were the first women who really came on board on the FinTech, you know, people probably, like we were discussing, the, you know, uh, backside also that uh, a lot of women are expected to kind of be probably in the space of cosmetics and the other software products, but not really technology, you know, and therefore you're probably a bit of a misfit in terms of people's perception. So what really, um, any challenges that you kind of faced, you know, taking on that position, you know, and especially when you were kind of building this brand in a category which probably is not seen as in similar, synonymous to maybe women doing it? Hey, challenges to both I, um, but what can I say? I think the main thing is that we've seen women now, uh, you know, become presidents, prime ministers, go to space, uh, lead public companies. Um, so I think uh, there is few of us, and I would say that it's also a very uh, popular bias. It's more acceptable to see women in marketing companies, in fashion companies, but when it comes to science, technology, engineering, there is still a you know huge uh, bias that is there in the mind of uh, several people. But I think there is no real reason and there is no way to really get over it other than the fact you know to just do it. And I think that's what I am trying to live by every day. Uh, and like I said, when you are doing a startup, you are anyways dealing with naysayers every single day of your journey. So I think my personal ambition is to lead Mobiquick uh, to become the first profitable fintech of India to get listed. And that is sort of the goalpost that I'm working personally towards. And hopefully by then, uh, the financial media, etc., will also notice that, look, yeah. women do women understand. Can, women are, and they can actually have a narrative of their own, which is very strong. Time's up here, but there are two questions. Here, which One question which probably is cliched, you know, but first I want to ask you, <laughs> definitely speaking. Is that how is it? I'm sure you're leading a lot of men in your company. You know, how is it to be a leader, you know, you know, in a company which probably has men? And do you find any challenges there? You have any experiences to kind of share with us? Aditi probably also. I think for the know. most part, uh, you know, I think one more thing I can tell you is that in companies where there are women in the leadership, I think we also encourage a lot more, um, you know, a stronger gender mix. So I'm happy to tell you that we have at least three women uh, at VP and senior VP level in my company out of maybe the eight, 10 VPs that are there. So there is uh, sort of more encouragement for women across the board at all levels. Uh, that's number one. We don't have any bias in terms of our hiring process. We try very hard to have an open mind. And um, no, I don't find it difficult to work with the men or to lead men because uh, when you're company's culture is built in a way we are always looking for people who are very smart who want to make something out of their own lives and also want to work towards a vision or a mission that there is some impact getting created and it's not just about uh, you know money and uh, stock options etc so for the most part i haven't had any uh, challenge it's actually um, you know been very nice and easy i think in my 12 year stint i had once upon a time where a gentleman who reported to me came up to me and said ki you know, I'm not successful because I report to you. I said, sir, aapka Hello? interview <laughs> maine liya, JD maine banaya, on board maine kiya hai aur ab aap mere ko hi bol rahe ho. So, you know, I gave him a challenge. I said, okay, so the CEO of my company and my co-founder is uh, actually a man. So, I said, theek hai, aapki reporting inko kar lete hai. Agle four weeks mein, six weeks mein dekhte hai, kuch hota hai kya change. And I wrote that on an email, I got it done, I informed the board. Thank you, sir. I think uh, the adage is, uh, I, is, is not appropriate. I don't think that men and women uh, don't like working with each other, being friends with each other. I think it's easy if there is alignment. You know, if there's a very egotistical person and on the other side there is a modest, hardworking person, if there's one person who likes to brag and the other person likes to work, wo alignment nahi ho paega. So it's actually more about attitude and, uh, you know, uh, more alignment on values than anything else. Ye main male female power uh, problem is not kuch hai nahi. Ah, we should not have this orientation of gender at all. It's all about work and how we really perform at work and how equal we are in terms of. Achha, ek, ek lead in question hai because I represent a news network. So I just want to ask you, I would not leave the stage before asking that. So uh, do you watch news channels and how significant do you believe, you know, the news genre is in a marketing plan for, for, you know, for a company like yours and also building brands in India? 
see i think news is important but as you yourself would know you know internet is giving everybody a run for the money uh, both in terms of news platforms going digital as well as social platforms but i think when there are very important events like you know all through covid when there is a war happening you know the ukraine war when there are such important events happening i think everybody is glued to the tv screens yes. and not so much necessarily just to the internet because you can actually get uh, more directed analysis uh, much faster on television so i think there is definitely scope actually for news media far more than all the other content uh, you know that is on the television so i do hope that there can be more innovation in the format of news that we have uh, playing in india uh, where it's not just uh, you know based on the political slant and is far more uh, factual and analytical yes Thank you so much for answering that and responding it so nicely and directly. Uh, I have a marketing guy who actually had given me a question to ask you definitely. I cannot again, sorry, sorry, Extreme Media, but I have to ask that. What would be your three predictions for 2023, 24? Any broadly speaking, it, what do you believe you know is going to be the way it's going to really pan out the year? So I think 22 to nikal gaya, 23 ke liye bhi log bol rahe inflation and uh, you know depression. I think my personal view is that it's gonna be a good year of growth uh, while global markets larger markets may still see uh, you know negative sentiment and or inflation depression recession etc i think that india is on a strong uh, wicket i think the way our economy is performing and i think after the um, sort of controlled growth that we have seen in 22 maybe half of 23 ke baad i expect that there will be a big uh, come back. I really uh, hope so. Yep. That's sort of how I'm fingers. looking at it, and you know, it will be great to see news of, yes. uh, you know, companies building and hiring, and not see news of layoffs, layoffs, and layoffs happening. Absolutely. That is. Thank you for thank you for the response again. Thank you very much, Apasma. I think our time is up almost. Thank it's, it's, you. It's Thanks, up. Mona. Thank you. And really having. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Mona Jain and Upasna Taku for that enriching chat. We would like to hold you both back on stage for just a few more seconds. We would request our session chair, uh, Ms. Mona Jain, to kindly present Upasana Taku with our token of appreciation. Thank you for sharing your wonderful and terrific thoughts on women leadership in uh, the space of Indian brands and the growth that the brands are seeing, especially in the space of fintech. Congratulations to you and thank you so much for sharing.